Hello everyone, and welcome back to WWE 13 Universe. You got the guy, Friday Night Smackdown, Final Edition of 2011. The following contest is for the European Championship. Making his way to the ring. Weighing through 160 pounds, he is the European Champion. Sorry if you heard all that clicking in the background. I thought I'd turn the game down a little bit as I feel like I've been kind of shouting over <laughs> I uh, turned the volume up for it in my capture program because that makes the game louder in the recording too. Uh, but I use like the volume mixer on Windows. I don't really think anyone cares, but I sometimes just start explaining stuff I've done just because like it's, it's easy for me to, to talk about and <laughs> it gives me something to say. Um, we're kicking off SmackDown here tonight, the European champ. Oh, what's that noise? What was that? It's really weird. It's something like, um. like a graphic in the game. It probably wasn't. It's probably fucking Bunny running around behind me. <laughs> anyway, Tensai makes his way to the ring at the night for his first. European Championship defense and the former champion Yoshitatsu is not the man that will be meeting him tonight, but instead DDP. Wait, this is DDP's SmackDown debut. <laughs> His name's Diamond Dallas Page, Justin. It's Diamond Dallas Page. <clears throat> Introducing the challenger. Starts sweating profusely. <laughs> Who is this guy? I don't know, I don't know who this is. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page, the bang, the bang man. Why does it say that on his jacket? Why have I I've probably not only just noticed that. Why am I noticing it again as if it was the first time I noticed it? Because I forgot the first time I noticed it. Why? Just why? Yeah, I think that was just Bunny I heard earlier. Not that anybody's like really concerned, you probably didn't even hear it in the video. I mean, you might have done. It might have been a sound effect in the video. You got the guy? We're about to see if Tensai's got the guy. And by the guy, I mean the European Championship, because this one is going. I am using a different PS3 controller today because I found it <laughs> in my drawer. And it... Oh wow, okay, yeah, that's just Bunny in the background. I'm sorry. We're uh we're not gonna be having him in the background soon. No, we're not getting rid of him, we're just moving him. <laughs> so he's not right behind me. I think I'm noticing yeah, I'm noticing a slight problem with this controller instantly, which is that uh the square button is very unresponsive. <laughs> Yeah, it's like really pressing. See, I got my PS3. Um, I bought it off of uh, an uncle of mine who had like seven of them because he kept fucking with them. And I think he's one of those people that opens up the controller and like fucks with it. Because all my um, God, dude, why? All my triggers are feeling like really spongy, and um, the buttons on this just don't feel like they're reacting at all. Alright, I'm gonna be right back. Alright, I think I'm back. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna try using my Bullshock 4. Because I really hate the PS3 controller. <laughs> Boom, baby. Well, this actually feels like it works fine. I don't know why it was working so badly that one time we played the Mysterio. Retrosomania, this actually feels... This feels nice. Oh, I would love being able to continue this series with a PS4 controller. That would make things so much better. I would never use the PS3 controller again if I had the choice. I just really don't like it. It's such a... I mean, to be fair, I've never had a new one. So I don't know if maybe there's actually something better about it. Yeah, I feel like it's moving normally. Yeah, for some reason, every time I talk at the moment, Bunny has decided he's going to start smacking around and going crazy in his hutch. He doesn't normally... He's been behind me for, like, the last, I don't know, probably like 70, 80 episodes of Universe, and you've never heard him, but today... 
today it's time to go on a fucking rampage and make sure that he makes as much noise as possible. Probably because we were discussing earlier today how we're going to be moving on, so he's like, alright. I've got to justify that decision real quick for you. I've got to make sure that you know that that is exactly what you want to do. Because I agree. <laughs> don't know about the PS4 controller for the PS3 is what the hell is the select button? Now, I don't think anything in this game uses the select button, so it doesn't matter too much, but it does make me wonder. A lot of people say that DDP maybe hasn't really earned this uh, European Championship opportunity tonight. I gotta be honest, I think I agree, but uh, nonetheless, Tensai, he, uh, he issued a challenge and uh, well, this is just the guy that answered, truth be told. Diamond Dallas Page, he wanted an opportunity to take down the big guy. I don't think these two ever faced off on uh, ECW at any point, so I kind of understand why DDP would maybe rush into this. But he's probably experiencing at least a little bit of regret right now as Tensai comes off the ropes and there's that big running senton. Tensai going in for the cover. He normally doesn't try the cover until the claw. I'm surprised we haven't outlawed the uh, the the mist that he does. I'm surprised that that's still uh, legal, to be completely honest. I'm sure you have yourself a drop. I tell you, after uh, the, the loss that Yoshitatsu suffered at the hands of Tensai, I wish nothing but the best for anybody that gets in the ring with this beast, as once again he has cornered Diamond Dallas Page as he delivers those elbows. And another elbow drop. Oh, what an elbow drop. Cover attempt here. Nope. Not quite. Send DDP in the ropes. No, pulls him back. I promise you that. I don't know what it is, but they'll find it. What is Tensai doing here? He's, he's readying himself. Okay. Oh, he had a running splash for some reason. I guess it was one. Oh, wow. Okay. And now Tensai once again choke bomb to Diamond Dallas Page. Oh boy, don't get up, DDP. You're not going to like the view. Straight to the throat. And here comes the poison mist claw. Right into the face of DDP. And then, of course, he's going to sweep out that leg. Yep, and go straight in for the cover. As I've just downloaded Digimon All-Star Rumble. <laughs> I didn't even realize I had a download going. But there it is. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> oh, it's Tensai. <laughs> that really threw me off. Like, wait a minute. Where, where did that come from? Tensai is still the European champion. Yes, maybe it is true. And I have a feeling you're looking at a man who is going to be European champion for a long, long time. I like how much he breaks character when he's holding a championship in his hand, you know? Like everybody else that has one. Well, Tensai is victorious as we move on here tonight on SmackDown. him right now his announcing has gotten like worse and worse as time's going on making her way to the ring i ain't saying shit well stephanie man i believe this is our first ever appearance here on friday night smackdown i mean it's you know when the women's division is on both brands i guess it's the same thing just different ring uh stephanie man i guess the one key difference here on smackdown is she's not protected by her brother shade or her father mr man the raw general manager as neither of those two are anywhere near Friday Night Smackdown.
Wow, you set someone's full intro! Wow! <clears throat> well, Layla coming on down to the ring of tonight. She's at the face-off against Stephanie McMahon. Of course, uh, trying to see a bit more diversity for the divas of the WWE now that they are on uh, three brands. I feel like it's only fair that we get to see them a little bit more than we normally would. Uh, well, see more variety. To I mean, we're seeing you know, a match, a Divas match on each show. They're main eventing the final show of the year tomorrow night on Superstars, as it will be uh, Kelly Kelly and Eve up against Natalia and Trish Stratus to main event the final show on uh, December 31st, which is two days away from 2012. Oh man, what a great year that's going to be. I can't wait for my favorite 2012 album. Um, 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 There's probably an album I really like from 2012. That one. We'll go with that one, you know? The one that I really like from 2012. I'll leave that album in the you know? I can't actually think of anything that came out of this ball off the top of my head. Some serious skills on display by Layla. Maybe I'll uh, move to America for six months and then come back in you know, about March of 2013. Maybe. The quick kick. I actually wouldn't do that nowadays. <laughs> All due respect to my American viewers, I'm, I'm not very proud to be an American anymore. Uh, you know, women aren't allowed control over their bodies, but men are allowed guns. It's it's a great country. <laughs> now, I'm not going to get too heavily on it. People get really pissy, even though I am an American. <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk about that, I guess. So I won't. I'm just going to say, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not the proudest American right now. I'm actually recording this on July 4th, and I just I couldn't give less of a shit. I'm normally quite proud. It's normally, you know, it's one of those things I like to let people know for God knows what reason. I think it just it makes me interesting. But now, mm, I don't know. All power to you if you're proud of being American. I'm not trying to shit on you. There are plenty of other great things about your country, I'm sure. It's just right now. Mm, not feeling it. Besides our candies, man. Our sweets. <laughs> our sweeties. I like them a lot more. I'm taking that <laughs> to the bank. Other than Mike and Ike's, you guys, you guys, you guys got some bomb ass Mike and Ike's. Bomb ass. Why am I talking like that? I don't talk like that. Anyway, Layla and Stephanie McMahon, they're having a match right now uh, as we close out 2011. Uh, we've got a huge main event tonight, Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Undertaker set to go one-on-one. -on -one. I want to say this is a first time, but I don't think it is, as they've definitely been on SmackDown at the same time before. The winner meets Brock Lesnar. Ooh, big kick to the head of Stephanie. The winner meets Brock Lesnar for the World of Weight Championship in five weeks' time at the Royal Rumble. Crazy to think Lesnar is refusing to defend his championship any sooner than the Royal Rumble. I definitely don't condone that behavior, but that's very much been Lesnar lately. It's very take my ball and leave. He's got that championship. He's aware he's got it in his clutches, and no one can really do anything about it whilst he's got it other than try and take it away from him. And uh, we've seen how well that works out. Stephanie going out of the ring, and Layla not taking that bait. Stephanie wants Layla to follow her outside the ring, and Layla is not doing it. Good move by Layla, if you ask me. That seems like a trap. Seems like a trick. Cover attempt with that suplex into the ring, not enough. And now Layla getting the layout on Stephanie McMahon. You know, I'm kind of glad to see this match happening tonight on SmackDown and not over on Raw because obviously Layla has dealt with a lot in the last year to do with Stephanie McMahon specifically. And I feel like this is the perfect way to close it out. You have these two face off on SmackDown and you see who the better woman really is. And I think we're seeing that in action right now with all due respect to Stephanie McMahon's 
Talents. Stephanie. Driving the back of the skull into the ground. Nice step there, takedown. What a fierce kick. That kick was fierce. I'll tell you about the time I kicked you from my Discord. <laughs> Michael Cole. That's a Michael Cole on Discord. Stephanie caught the leg of Layla and uh, not really seem to know what to do with it, so Layla with another kick. And then she needs to capitalize. Elbow drop. Elbow drop. Off the feet. This X button is very loud on this PS4 controller. I'm just happy to be using it, honestly. I want to try and find a way to make it work wirelessly, because I prefer not to always have to have a USB hooked in. Oh, break of the eyes. Why don't we ever call out Layla for her late her break to the eyes? Her blatant break to the eyes. No, they're not done. Not even close. No, they're not done. No. No, Stephanie's a god. Once again, layout number two because no finishers win on the first attempt here in the W13 universe. Cover attempt here. This one's over. I don't really have a lot to say here, I'm just going to spin a wrap up. Layla is victorious. She has defeated Stephanie McMahon to close out the year. I wonder if perhaps 2012 will be the year that Layla becomes Divas Champion. Perhaps it finally will happen. Great win here tonight for Layla. Well deserved. She continues to impress and rise the ranks of the Divas division. I think 2012 is going to be the year of Layla. I'm calling it now. As we move towards our next match of the night, we've been told that Dolph Ziggler and Damian Sandow will meet in the ring for the first time five weeks ahead of their Royal Rumble battle for the United States Championship, but they have been tasked with finding a tag team partner between them. Who will they team with next? trying to figure out what albums that I like came out in 2012. <laughs> I'm like quickly trying to pull a couple of questions. I think this one came out in 2012. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, hang on. Hang on. I'm not going to say that one yet. There's one other one. Yeah, I think I have my decision. Just, just give me a sec. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Yeah. Who is Dolph Ziggler's mystery partner going to be, by the way? Who is it going to be? Dolph? Ziggler making his way to the ring here. Okay, yeah, my favorite album from 2012, as far as I can tell, is probably Ugh. How I Learned to Stop Giving a Shit and Love Mindless Self Indulgence. I Mindless Self Indulgence. There you go. And for anyone who was waiting on the edge of their seat over that and not the suspense of who this could be, who is Dolph Ziggler teaming with, by the way? Who could it be? <gasps> He's back from his injury. Yeah, every album I think is really good from 2012. I quickly look at its release date and it says 2013. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Not that one. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's my final answer. That is my final answer. CM Punk making his way to the ring once again. And this man has got a little bit of history with the current United States Champion and Champion of Champions as a matter of fact. CM Punk probably was very willing to team up with Dolph Ziggler here tonight because Damian Sandow is the man that CM Punk defeated for the European Championship. So if he could defeat Sandow here tonight, there's a lot in this for CM Punk. He could become a contender for the United States Championship down the line. Wait, what? 
Sandow really had his partner come out before him. Well, this may be a bit of a bold move on Damian Sandow's part. I don't know if maybe he just couldn't find anyone that was willing to team up with him. He's not exactly proven to be the most trustworthy partner. Jack Swagger is a little bit more on the desperate side as of late. The guy uh, finally picked up his second victory over on Superstars in what feels like the last year. Uh, he defeated, um, I think it was Diamond Dallas Page he defeated, as a matter of fact, just this past Saturday is on Superstars. Now he comes out here tonight to team with the United States Champion, Damian Sandow. The United States Champion, the Champion of Champions, Mr. Money in the Bank. Damian Sandow is a highly decorated individual. And I think that the future is definitely bright. You know, we talk about people who are going to have a great 2012. You can't help but think that the guy who holds a guaranteed World Heavyweight Championship shot is going to have a great 2012. I mean, put it into this perspective, right? The, uh, this man debuted in 2011. This, this man made his debut, I believe it was, uh, a month-ish into season three. We saw Damien Sandow appear for the first time. He won the United States Championship from, uh, Rey Mysterio, the man that ended the longest US Championship reign. Uh, Drew McIntyre. Speaking of which, Damian Sandow made his debut by attacking Drew McIntyre backstage and setting his sights on that United States Championship. He won the European Championship. Um, I don't actually remember who Sandow won the European Championship from. It might have been Sheamus. You know, the longest reigning World Heavyweight Champion in history. And then he won the Champion of Champions title back in November in a Championship Scramble match. I think he got a pinfall over three-time WWE Champion John Cena to win that Champion of Champions title. And of course, let's not forget he is still holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. Yeah, I would say that Damian Sandow has had a fantastic 2011. I don't think anyone could say they've had a better year than this guy, to be fair. The guy's got two championships. I mean, admittedly, one of them is a trophy, not a championship, but... You know, I'd say he's pretty well decorated right now. So here we go, Jack Swagger starting things off up against Dolph Ziggler. Surprised to even see Damian Sandow match his tag team partner's attire here tonight. That's uh, a little more selfless than I was expecting from him. This is a, a definitely an unfavorable matchup for Jack Swagger. Dolph Ziggler is just bursting with momentum. So to have him set foot in the ring uh, against Jack Swagger, who is, uh, very flat on momentum as of late. It almost feels unfair on Swagger. Swagger. Oh, what is it? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. I mean, don't do that. Definitely don't do that. This is your first match on SmackDown in who even knows how long. I would definitely say take this match seriously. A little while Jack Swagger called himself the gatekeeper of uh, SmackDown. He would try to fend off new superstars that came here from ECW. I think he gave up on that fairly quickly upon realizing that they weren't taking his spot. They were outperforming him. Scoop slam into the center of the ring. Nicely done there by Swagger. Or he goes for a cover attempt, but of course Dolph with a very quick kick out. Ooh. I'd say this is an interesting choice here from Damian Sandow to let Swagger start the match off. It'll be interesting to see who becomes the alpha male early in the contest. These are all people I'd consider very high up in the United States Championship pool. Maybe not Swagger so very much right now, but I do think that uh, he could one day become the All-American American United States Champion. Single leg Boston Crab applied on Jack Swag. Not a guy I want to go on a long car trip with. Say from here to. Whoa! And he fights it. 
Sorry, I've been up for very long. I know it's uh, 1 30 in the morning, but I've been up for about two hours. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of losing track. Look at these two jockey for position. It's an interesting hit man. Swagger now. Jack Swagger from Perry, Oklahoma. Send Sigler into the corner. And off the ropes. Loves to brag about that great amateur background. And he uses some of those moves in every match. That's what's made him famous. Back into the ring as I noticed Damian Sandow made a point of getting a cheap bit of offense in on Dolph Ziggler. And now Swagger showing off his power. As he uh do we have to have that camera angle? <laughs> Into the corner, and I think, yeah, there we go. Damian Sandow is in. So uh, from here on out, we're going to be getting a little bit of a taster of what to expect uh, in five weeks' time at the Royal Rumble. I believe both Damian and Sandow and Do Damian and Sandow, Damian Sandow and Dolph Ziggler are both eligible to still be in the Royal Rumble despite facing each other that same night. So don't worry if you're hoping for one of these two to win the Royal Rumble. Well, the odds aren't in their favor, but they still very much can win the Royal Rumble. Here. Sandow now catches Dolph, and there's that leg sweep. Normally he combine that into his terminus, but uh, he had a second thought there. As now Dolph tries to get CM Punk in the ring, and there you go, Punk is in. For a while, Damian Sandow really felt like he was ducking CM Punk. As I say, CM Punk defeated Sandow for the European Championship. These two have their history. And I can't help but think, will CM Punk ever pursue revenge on the man that put him on the injured list, Brock Lesnar? I think no. I think, you know, call me crazy, but I think CM Punk is going to let that one slide. Because I think he realizes that's in his best interests. the ropes and a big knee across the face of Punk and now Sandow all caught into that neck breaker by CM Punk. What next uh, Gold Dust is back in action following his loss to Tensai that happened a couple weeks ago on Smackdown. He'll be facing one on one against Drew McIntyre, a man who at the moment a lot of people are saying is experiencing a downfall. People feel that Drew McIntyre's best day is as quickly falling behind- oh. Okay. The USB uh, on my PS4 controller is a little bit wobbly. Unfortunately. But, uh, yeah. That's why I wanted to connect it wirelessly. I'll sort that out uh, off screen. If I can. Um, but yeah, a lot of people think that Drew McIntyre is having a bit of a downfall, that he's not quite what he used to be. Uh, obviously that loss to Dolph Ziggler at uh, TLC I think has kind of shaken his confidence a little bit I'd imagine. So I kind of see where people are coming from, I think it's a little bit harsh to criticize Drew McIntyre, a man who was riding so high for so long, but I mean those criticisms are only coming from the fact that he isn't riding high anymore. CM Punk really playing into Damian Sandow right now. Sandow covered. Kick out there by Damian Sandow. CM Punk going straight in for another cover. That seems a little bit presumptuous. Perhaps weighing on the patience of CM Punk. Looks like Sandow has seen enough as he takes this one to the corner. And in comes Jack Swagger. Double team there. Swagger go. Oh, wait. Okay. Okay. Gut wrench powerbomb there by Jack Swagger. A world championship winning move. Not enough to take CM Punk down. Could you imagine if Jack Swagger could get a pinfall over CM Punk? I think that would really do him some good. Now, I know CM Punk isn't someone with the best win loss record in his own right. I think he's uh, currently sat the closest to hitting 50 losses in his career. But, uh,. 
being said, Jack Swagger picking up a victory of a CM Punk or Dolph Ziggler here tonight. I think we'll do him a hell of a lot of good. Ooh, big clothesline by Dolph Ziggler. Looks like he's uh, getting out of there pretty quickly. I don't think Swagger realizes Dolph's not the legal man. And now up on his shoulders, CM Punk catches the go to sleep on Swagger. Damian Sandow is down. Is he out? That is the question. Here's the cover on Jack Swagger from CM Punk. And S CM Punk picks up the victory. I can tell you now, that's definitely not the guy in the match that CM Punk will have wanted to have pinned. But a win is still a win. They have a mixed reaction from the crowd tonight to these two winning. I mean, there's been a lot of fan support for the uprising of Jack Swagger. And there are, I know there have been some people that have uh, they've felt sympathy, they've felt concern, they want to see him do better. So I guess maybe to see him take another loss could hurt some people, but hey. Nonetheless, CM Punk, Dolph Ziggler, they are victorious here tonight as we move towards our next match of the night, Goldust and Drew McIntyre 101. suffered a tough loss at the hands of Tensai a couple weeks ago, but Goldust could really capitalize on the downfalling of Drew McIntyre that I was speaking about moments ago in this one-on-one uh, -on -one encounter here tonight. <clears throat> Should be a pretty good match, I'd imagine, between these two. Drew McIntyre, I feel he's going to have a lot to prove, though. As I say, that TLC loss, I think, really got to him. Drew McIntyre, at the moment, I think he's starting to hit his last resort. He's starting to get a little bit fed up of feeling like an inferior competitor. We'll see if uh, Drew McIntyre or Goldust, which one of these two can come out with that little bit of momentum that they can both use right now. Goldust, of course, uh, you know, a long, a long time ago, he was a hardcore champion. Before that, I felt like he was a great contender for the things like the Intercontinental Championship, even the US title. But uh, right now, I feel like Goldust has very much slipped off. And again, I feel like this could be a good match for the both of these two to showcase their talents and try to rise the ranks. That lady's face. Good God. No, don't get closer. <laughs> You know, I'll never forget the reactions that Drew McIntyre used to get when he came through that cut, and I felt like we were looking at uh, a real mega star. I'm not trying to downplay the importance of Drew McIntyre right now. Please do not twist it. Please do not take it that way. I feel like this man's made a few bad decisions in his career, and they've set him back a little bit, but I think there's still time for him to bounce back from those. I think there's still time for Drew McIntyre to be the mega star that he was on the border of being. I think he can get that momentum back for sure. So very curious if he can pull that off tonight against Goldust. We can see the man that uh, I think really impressed a few weeks ago on SmackDown against Brock Lesnar. I think that was a great showing of exactly who Drew McIntyre is, what Drew McIntyre is. Went straight in on the main street there. Okay, this is more like it. This is the Drew that I've come to expect. I hate to see it come at the expense of Gold Dust, but ooh, Drew really coming in hot here. Striking away at the face of Gold Dust. Oh, 
gold dust over the ropes and out of the ring. And although Drew McIntyre has taken a moment to just appreciate his work. Drew gold dust in the ring. Oh, wow. What a kick that was. McIntyre. No, oh my gosh. Need of a back there. So he thinks he's got gold dust down and out already, but he does not. And now hooks the arms and a future shock DDT. Well, that was, that was fast. Very early into the match. And that's it. Wow. Okay, where's this Drew Bean? Drew McIntyre with a defiant victory over Goldust tonight. Well, it looks like the confidence has been built back up in this guy. Quite a bit. Drew McIntyre really putting gold dust in his place with a quick, decisive victory. There's no doubt that the momentum I was talking about having seen this guy lost is definitely not gone. Wow. What a move by Drew McIntyre there. Winning this match in just over a minute. Very impressive. Steve Austin said to meet The Undertaker in a number one contenders match for the World Heavyweight Championship. This should be a fantastic match. I'm looking forward to seeing what goes down here. I do, I do feel like in terms of people on SmackDown right now that I could, I could see giving Brock Lesnar at least a run for his money. You know, I thought Sheamus and Randy Orton were some great choices, but unfortunately both of those two suffering some hard losses at the hands of Brock Lesnar. Maybe Undertaker or Steve Austin are just the ones that we need to finally get that World Heavyweight Championship back from Brock Lesnar. There is nothing holding this man back anymore. He is I don't even I don't even know the words what I'm looking for here. He is simply unstoppable, I think. You know, I've always went wanted to see what would happen, what would go down in a clean, fair one-on-one -on -one fight between Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker, and I think we might just get it at the Royal Rumble, and what a way to kick off 2012 that would be. But at the same time, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Brock Lesnar sounds like... It sounds like madness. It sounds like it could be so hard-hitting. This is going to be a great match for sure. I'm just just weighing it up in my mind that I can't really picture which one of these two is going to come out on top. On one side you've got Austin, a former WWE Champion, a former ECW World Heavyweight Champion. And on the other side you've got The Undertaker, who is I believe a three or four time World Heavyweight Champion. I can't remember the exact number now. Let's see, he was the first World Champion, he won it from Randy Orton. Uh, then he... Dropped it back to Orton. Then it went to Raw for a while. Uh, he never won the Dewey title during that time. Here we go. 
And this one's destined um, to be a human demolition derby. Undertaker on the WWE Championship from Cena. Into the headlock. Impressive believe. by the Undertaker. And then the world title uh, in a unification match. And then he dropped the WWE title. Yeah, okay, I think he's a three time world heavyweight champion. I think he's a four time overall world champion, but a three time world heavyweight champion. But yeah, three time world heavyweight champion from one time WWE champion up against uh, one of the longest reigning WWE champions we've ever seen. And I believe the longest reigning ECW world heavyweight champion we ever saw. Uh, maybe he wasn't actually, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember who the longest reigning East of Whatever Champion was. I don't feel like I stayed on top of that statistic as much as I should have. Off the ropes, big boot there by The Undertaker. And Undertaker, I'm not sure that that's the, really the mind game you want to be playing right now. I think he's not used to being in the ring with a force quite as dominant as Stone Cold Steve Austin. This is a pay per view quality match. For sure, that we are getting to close out the year here on SmackDown. And I think that's perhaps the most fitting episode of SmackDown for this to take place on. I'll take with a lot of strikes, got that brawlish type style to him. Lost the able to kick out. Scoop. Slam. Cole, Cole nice clothesline there by Austin. And Undertaker sends Austin off the ropes. Back body drop. And Undertaker, I think, honestly, might be uh, feeling a little bit too complacent here. I know that he is the master of mind games, but I think that he's got to pick his time and place because right now I feel like you know, throwing the, the thumb across the neck symbol at, under, at uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, getting down his knee, you know, that traditional Undertaker pose. I feel like, you know, normally that would be a good mind game when you're up against anyone else. But I don't think mind games are going to work on Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think this guy just thinks fight, fight, fight. Undertaker setting Austin up on the ropes, and Austin sends Undertaker out of the ring. This has been a great match so far, I think. I have uh, definitely feel like I've seen more offense from The Undertaker than Austin, but that's only in the early goings of the match. I don't really want to rule out anyone based on the first few minutes of the match. Austin now sent into those steel steps. And The Undertaker resetting the count as Austin takes it back into the ring. I know it looks like Austin's gonna come out and follow The Undertaker. These guys are going just all over the outside area right now. I think you can expect a lot of this out of these two. I'm going to take a big flying clothesline there. I'm going to take it once again, resetting the count. What? <laughs> once again, resetting the count. Austin with a big right hand that time. I see Austin coming in strong here. Austin. I don't think I'll ever stop saying that. I'm sorry. We are back inside the ring. It is Undertaker bringing it to Austin some more here. Nice bulldog there by Stone Cold Steve Austin as he manages to bring down the dead man. Once again, outside the ring, these two go. Well, at least Undertaker goes. 
past him now, lifting Undertaker up to his feet. Caught him caught in that headlock there, but Undertaker able to reverse it. And he sends Austin into the barricade. Oh, oh wow, oh, Austin was about to get clotheslined into the crowd there by the Undertaker. Goes down, Austin looking to be in a very prominent position right now. Undertaker goes up to us. Oh, whoa! Caught Austin by the throat. Choke slam. Dead center of the ring. No one does a choke slam more devastating than the Undertaker. But Austin got to his feet immediately. I don't think Undertaker liked that too much. This is, this is a great fight right here. Austin and Undertaker exchanging blows. Now Austin, stunner. The dead man is down. But he's picking him back up. Oh, wow. We saw the bloody state that Shawn Michaels closed out this past Monday on Raw. In. I'd hate to see that happen to the Undertaker too. Austin goes for a cover here. Undertaker with a kick out. Undertaker back to his feet, but it's Austin who continues to be in control here. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, clothesline there to the Undertaker. And this is now starting to look like Stone Cold's match. From the moment Undertaker's began to bleed, I think we saw a shift in momentum in this matchup. I think the stunner was a defining shift. Even if it didn't get the job done, I mean, to be fair, he didn't cover him. Goes for a cover on Austin. I mean, an Undertaker. Undertaker up to his feet, goes for a strike. These two very dazed, very tired. corner. What is Stone Cold going to do here? Undertaker. Undertaker what is this? Oh, Austin set up on top. Undertaker with a big right hand. And now Undertaker. Big! Superplex. Runs his thumb across his neck. Undertaker now. Catches the arm of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh oh. Here we go. I think I know Undertaker is getting ready to finish this one. An old school connecting across the back of Stone Cold. And now Undertaker is saying that this one is over. Austin going to turn around right into a Tombstone pile driver. Got him. Tombstone on Austin, shoulders down, Undertaker is the number one contender to Brock Lesnar's World Heavyweight Championship. What a match that's going to be. A mutual sign of respect between two of SmackDown's top talents. You will rarely ever see The Undertaker shake someone's hand. But here tonight, I think these two really brought each other to their limits. And what a way to close out the year 2011. Undertaker defeating Stone Cold Steve Austin. And in the new year, this man could be on World Heavyweight Championship number four if he can defeat Brock Lesnar. We've got five weeks until then. Thank you all for watching tonight's episode of SmackDown. I'll see you in the new year for SmackDown. But also, I'll see you tomorrow night for the New Year's Eve edition of Superstars. Bye-bye.